why is this here? Oh yeah, never mind. need to chop. I am crooked so we'll have to fix that in post. I look like I'm seeing better days. Wow that looks like a rag doll, raggedy Ann. Hey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke. Today we are going to be talking about my velvet philodendron and so after going through all of my philodendron collection, well just all of my plants, which are basically philodendron, I realized that I have quite a few velvet philodendron and so I just wanted to showcase them all to you and share the differences that I have found between them and yes, some of their care. So if you haven't, take a minute and subscribe to this channel, that way you can be up to date on more videos like this one. And if you are a recurring viewer, thank you so much for coming back and watching another video. As I said, we're going to be talking about my velvet philodendron. So I really love philodendron. If you don't know me, basically all of my collection has become philodendron. I will be honest. I used to collect a ton of alocasia. I mean, seriously, I would walk into a store and if there was a new alocasia, I would get it. I had many different calathea. I loved calathea alocasia. Those are the two more difficult house plants to care for, but I really enjoyed them and they had so many different varieties. And I loved them because their foliage was all so unique and so different. And so I didn't start getting into the philodendron and honestly, pretty much it. Like I didn't start getting into philodendron um, until a couple of years after collecting. And I just realized how they are similar, but they are all beautiful and have their unique patterns and um, styles, I will say. So I started collecting philodendron and really loving them. And that has become a major collecting point. Like that has become the major plant in my collection or genus in my collection. And so I started collecting apparently a lot of velvet philodendron, which velvet philodendron are obviously extremely beautiful. Um, they look like very luxe and I, I want to say high end, it's not high end, but they just look elevated to a certain level more than your average plant that is just the shiny leaf. And so they are very attractive and they are very fun and unique and you can pet them for hours and they are just incredibly soft. So with all that big intro, let's get into the first velvet philodendron in my collection. The first velvet philodendron in my collection is actually the newest one in my collection, which is this philodendron varicosum. So this plant is, I mean, incredible. If you see it really large in the large form, um, obviously this is a small immature plant, but if you see it in its mature state, if you see it in its mature state, they are absolutely beautiful. The leaves are not flat. They are very just textured and dip and I don't even know what, um, but they are also very red on the back. So you can see that this plant is start, starting to have um, that red burgundy color backing, but once they get more mature, it becomes even like more red and defined. And it's just a beautiful plant. These are a climbing plant. So put them on a moss pole, they will do well and they will grow larger in their foliage. I have not noticed that this one is a hard to care for um, like velvet philodendron. So I will share some of my more difficult velvet philodendron. But this guy, he sits on top of this shelving unit right here under a sandy uh, 10 watt little clip light and it's been doing really well. Um, I do water it once the soil is um, completely dry. I have it in my chunky good soil mix here and I've not noticed any issues with it. Again, I have some velvets that we'll talk about that don't like to dry out and are fussy about humidity, but this guy seems to be very easy going. Another point um, that this has which you're probably not going to be able to see on this video, um, they have fuzzy petioles. So the petioles are this part right here where the leaf comes out of, and they are fuzzy, quite like a fuzzy petiole, <laughs> philodendron, um, or a scomiferium, or I don't even know what. Um, but this is very fuzzy at the top no near the leaf right here, and it's a green fuzz, which is really fascinating. So this is a beautiful velvet philodendron 
that again, I had wanted to add to my collection, but it was a little bit harder to find. So I found this one at Peta's Planters in Dallas. So if you are in the area, it was $26 and that's a really, to me, a good deal um, on a plant, but this has multiple plants in one pot and it is beautiful. Like, I mean, this foliage is absolutely stunning. If you want to see, I feel like I'm always shouting him out, um, because I'm not good at that growing them that large. Um, if you want to see a full grown one, you can go to Sydney plants, plants, um, plant guy, sorry, Sydney plant guy. He has a massive varicosum and almost all of these philodendron that I'm talking about today, but this plant is truly beautiful and so very unique, very fuzzy, and very velvety philodendron. Moving on to another um, plant that I maybe or let's move. Let's I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna move on to another easy um, velvet philodendron. This is the philodendron um, gloriosum. So the gloriosum a couple of years ago was super huge and could not find it anywhere. And nowadays. You can find them pretty easily, I would say, in your normal plant store. Um, you're probably not going to find them in your, you know, grocery store or big box store, though if you're in California or Florida, I've seen people pick these up, so go check it out. But this guy is a, I would say, like, he, this, this one is a more, like, it's a hard velvet. This is going to be really weird. This is a very soft velvet, if that makes any sense at all whatsoever. Um, but this guy is velvet, super beautiful leaves and foliage, get very large and massive leaves. Now this, so this Gloriosum has not caused me any issues. I have several of them. I actually have another one, hold on. Okay, growing here. So these are a crawler. So this is a crawling philodendron, um, which means it goes along the ground. So you can see here, that it is actually growing in to the soil and the leaves come out like this. Instead of just going up and trailing, they go like that across the ground. So this is my uh, mother plant, Gloriosum, um, and it's been sitting under this fancy 35 watt light for the entire time I've had it, which is probably like a year and a half or so. But um, it has not caused me any issues. It does really well under there. It doesn't mind not having the humidity. I let it dry all the way out. It is in my chunky soil mix. Every single one of these philodendron are in my chunky soil mix, good soil mix, which you can purchase at my Etsy shop and I will link it below, but they all do really well in it. So that is my philodendron like mother plant so this is not crawling yet because it is a baby little guy but the one thing i have noticed about these is they are a little bit slower growers so it's probably my slowest um, velvet philodendron that i have every other one is a pretty consistent grower but for some reason my gloriosum is just really slow and so to point it out i got that gloriosum the same time i got my mcdowell philodendron which is a cross between a gloriosum but it is not a velvet philodendron and it is a crawler just the same but this is my hold on we gotta get up so again i got them the same time okay keep in mind so this is my gloriosum got them from the same shop same place same pot size hold on so this is this guy okay this, this is my McDowell. Look at that. Like this is my massive McDowell. It's also in a crawling pot because again, it's a crawler, but look at this massive. These are just gigantic leaves. Um, again, not a velvet philodendron. It is a cross between it, but this one, look at that same time frame just doubled up. So I will tell you that this Gloriosum is a little bit of a slower grower. This is my Philodendron Gloriosum. Love it. Doesn't mind drying out. Doesn't mind being a little bit neglected. Um, all the same of any, you know, typical Philodendron. But just again, it's a slower grower than the rest of my Velvet Philodendron. And in general, just the rest of my Philodendron. Another one that we'll just talk about because it's like right here. I actually need to chop this guy back or add it to a moss pole um, because it is growing crazy right now. So this is a fuzzy petiole. And honestly, I cannot remember um, the actual name. Uh, that, that's just the, you know, nickname is the fuzzy petiole. But so this is a philodendron. 
that I've actually had twice now. So this is the second time I have it. I'm doing a lot better with it this second time. The first time it got spider mites galore. However, it was, it already had spider mites when I purchased it and I knew it did. I just thought I can get rid of them and I couldn't. So I threw it away, got this plant. Um, so this plant is a fuzzy petiole. It has not caused me any issues. However, it has lived its life in my greenhouse cabinet. Um, I've kind of stuck it in there because when I did have my fuzzy peti petiole previously, it kind of started acting like my micans. And so we'll talk about my micans, but it started, you know, deteriorating. And again, that was because of spider mites. But I really noticed that if I didn't have it well, like, um, you know, saturated soil and kept on watering, it would just kind of droop and not do well and the leaves that would come out were always stuck and so again I know that's a spider mite issue as well and so I don't have a you know a plant to like truly go off of it and make a good assumption so I just kind of stuck this in my greenhouse cabinet and left it there it's not even a cabinet it's a shelving unit and left it there so it does get a good amount of humidity probably 70 percent humidity and it is um you know well draining soil again it's in my good soil i don't water it all the time you know since it's in my greenhouse cabinet it stays pretty moist and so i do let it dry out but it still has moisture in there that it's taking in so I don't know, all that to say is it's doing really well in there. It has aerial roots going out of like every little area that is on this plant and it's sizing up. So I do not have this on a moss pole. These are a climber. Obviously you can tell that by the way it's growing right now, um, but it is sizing up from where it started. And so that's always a good sign. It just actually sits like on my wall, like in the cabinet, if that makes sense. Uh, or the shelving unit and so I think it's trying to attach itself honestly um, because it's definitely grown out here and here and that's again where it sits on my wall and so these will attach themselves to your walls if you give them the opportunity to I have had it happen before with my plants I actually let one of my pothos it's not philodendron um, attach to our wall and start climbing up it so you can just beware there are you know times where you're gonna have to pull it off and it might pull your paint off but anyways this guy is a very easy to care for plant um, again I haven't given it any outside of a cabinet condition so I'm not positive realistically how well these do uh, without humidity but that is my experience with this guy and so this one is a I would say a lower this makes sense a velvet lower velvet than like gloriosum really soft varicosum it's soft but like it's hard this one's very slick but velvet if that makes sense so not the velvet velvetist velvetist huh not the most velvet leaf but it is still very velvet now these also why they're called fuzzy petioles is when they get older um, again to a more mature state like this varicosum they will start to form fuzz along their petioles and so my previous one did have fuzz on it um, and it was really interesting it was kind of weird because this varicosum doesn't have the fuzziest petioles like it's up primarily by the leaf but my fuzzy petiole this guy it was kind of all down the petiole and so it was a little bit bizarre but it was very interesting um, to say the least and so I I don't know that's just that's just what they look like when they get older but um, I can already tell that this newest leaf here actually has fuzz starting whereas the other ones they don't have any fuzz so I know that it is sizing up and it's growing and it's maturing because it is producing that little fuzziness but that's my fuzzy petiole. I really don't know if any of that made sense, but that was my thoughts on it. My next like easy velvet philodendron that I love so much is this El Choco Red. So quite like the Varicosum, these are both velvet and they have a red backing. However, the Varicosum has, I think in my personal opinion, um, a more red backing than the El Choco Red does but I don't know what the El Choco red looks like at a full mature state, and maybe it is a lot more red. Um, this guy is a climber as well. You can see here already it's wanting to climb and it has its aerial roots sticking out. 
I think that this is an incredibly easy to care for velvet philodendron. I have had this, where did I get this from? So this plant right here, that's, no, I think I got it from, no, I got it from Suburban Plants in Mesquite. So this plant right here, that's actually the mother plant of where this guy came from. Um, and so this one is going crazy because it had multiple plugs in one pot and I really need to take them out and separate them because I would like this one to grow on a moss pole and to get larger leaves and foliage so that I can see the red. Um, but it is a really fast grower. I mean, it's constantly growing. And so this was actually part of my giveaway that I did over on my Instagram. Um, I'm waiting to send it out to the winter until the weather gets better because it was in a cold area. But um, already it's produced one new leaf and it has another leaf on the way. And so it is just constantly growing. So this has been sitting up on my shelf um, and it gets light from my 10 watt Sansy light. So not the best light, like not the most bright light and it does really well. Same for this plant. This plant is getting light from my 35 watt light, um, Sansy grow light. And it's obviously super far from it and it's still growing. And so that just tells me that these guys can tolerate a lower light situation and do just fine. Um, I do let them dry all the way out. They're in the good soil and I have not experienced any humidity issues with them. So very easy to care for, very awesome plant. I definitely think that these two plants right here, the Varicosum and the El Choco Red are my favorite um, velvet philodendrons by far. Moving on to my last three velvet philodendron that are actually my hardest to care for. So I don't even know where to start. Okay, we'll start with this one. So this one is the philodendron micans. And somebody's going to say, why is that hard to care for? It's actually not. Um, however, they do like a lot of light, I have found. And they don't love to dry out and they need something to climb. So if you want the foliage on this guy to become large and lush, like one of these guys over here, you need to put it on a pole and get it to climb. Otherwise, it's just going to be a trailing plant, which is very beautiful, um, and it's gonna cascade like this, and that is fine, that is great. But if you want a larger, lush um, micans, which I have seen people grow these outside in Florida on their trees, and on poles inside and they get just massive and awesome foliage. But without the right conditions I have found, it does not produce that obviously, especially if you're not giving it a moss pole. But I keep this in my greenhouse cabinet. I have had this plant actually since, uh, I wanna say 2019. So it's actually one of my longest running plants, but I keep cutting it back. So I have made multiple plants from this one little pot. I actually purchased it as a four inch pot um, from Kent Nursery in Kent, Washington. But I kept it because it was a rare plant at the time. And so it is still a little difficult to find. Um, I honestly have seen a few of them at Lowe's, but as far as seeing them in plant stores, I'm gonna be real, I really don't see them. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just because my area, you know, the area that I'm in, that people don't really collect them and so therefore they don't put them in the stores, but I really haven't seen them. And so it is still a little bit of a, a unique uh, find when you do find it, but it is a beautiful plant. I love the foliage. It is a beautiful velvet leaf. It's just, I think I was assuming it was going to be something like this where it climbs and um, the foliage gets bigger as it grows, but instead it's definitely a trailer if you don't do that like moss pole and everything letting it climb um, and so it can be very beautiful but again i have seen for, since 2019 that these guys my plant loves light as soon as i put it in high light or under my grow light which is where it sits it took off all of the aerial roots took off the leaves started growing i mean it constantly grows if you give it the great like conditions that it wants so i will not you know stand against it there it is a grower but it's just the fact that i have to have it in that highlight it likes a bit of humidity and it doesn't like to dry out in my care so it's just one of those like more temperamental um, plants that i just don't really enjoy as much as I enjoy um, some of these other velvet philodendron in my collection. Moving on to the last two. 
So the last two are actually, well, one is a hybrid of the other. Um, so the last, you know, okay, not the last one, second to last one is just this front here. Ignore all of this mess right here and just look at that. Yeah, that right there. So these are the philodendron mycin, or mycin, I'm sorry, melanochrysum. And so I have a melanochrysum, it's actually right here. That's the mother plant. That's the mother plant. That is what's left of the mother plant. So, oh, that's not, yeah, no, that is, sorry. I have another part of it that is in a little, um, like candy dish that I have had it in there since December growing and it's growing very well, which leads me to my point. These guys need humidity. Like I'm not sure what everybody else is doing, but my house is not, not a humidity high level place at all. <laughs> this plant loves humidity. I got it, um, honestly, probably going on two years now. And so I think I got it like when my second born was born, like, fairly soon after. Immediately, I struggled with it, and so I really wanted a melanochrysum. They are beautiful foliage. Their leaves just get absolutely long and stunning and amazing um, plant. They are a climber. Um, however, they, in this smaller form, I'm going to say, need humidity and a lot of it, and they don't like to dry out, and they get spider mites really easily. <laughs> So I was dealing with all of that. I had this sitting in a southwest, west fa southwest facing window um, when I got it, like as soon as I got it, and it it suffered. Like it suffered. I'm not even sure what, but it immediately got spider mites. I had to completely chop it back several times. Now the one thing I will say about it is it is a vigorous grower. It will grow quickly. However. The growth on it, if you do not have the watering right and the humidity right, and there are no spider mites, um, come out like wrong. Like it just comes out stuck and the leaves were constantly basically like breaking as they were unfurling. And so I just struggled with it. I couldn't get its watering down and I couldn't figure out how to get the dang spider mites to go away. And so it was just a really big struggle. So I chopped it all back. And then I purchased a second plant because I thought, you know what, the first one, it just is, something was wrong, you know, something was wrong. I purchased a second plant, did the same thing, got spider mites, wouldn't unfurl its leaves, they were getting stuck. And so I was like, okay, it does need humidity. Um, it does not like to dry out. And so I need to keep my watering up, but I just couldn't do that. Realistically, I'm not the best at keeping up on watering my plants, okay? I do well with drought tolerant plants and all of the philodendron in my collection and my the rest of my collection are drought tolerant plants. And so this melanochrysum is just not one of those. So I was struggling with it. And again, the spider mites issue just kept beating them down. And so I don't know how many times I chopped both of those plants back. Um, I chopped them back a ton. And so this is what's left. This one has been growing in water since I don't even know what, probably for six months. Now I've watched them. This does not have spider mites. Um, my plant over there does not have spider mites. And then the one plant that I have um, in my, again, my globe, that is a, like a humidity dome, it does not have spider mites. So it currently does not have spider mites. I have not seen spider mites on them. Um, now I did change the soil out. So I changed that one to my good soil. The one that's growing in my humidity dome is in perlite and then this one is in water. So I don't know if it was the soil mixture causing like some issues too, if it was stressing the plant out, which then causes, you know, calls to the spider mites and all that good stuff, whatever, or if it was in the soil. Um, but I haven't had an issue so far with them. I just don't, my preference is not for them. <laughs> That's all I got to say is I am just kind of over the melanochrysum. And again, I think a lot of people feel the same. Um, unless you have a larger form that's already very mature and you have a space for it to give it the humidity that it wants in the environment, I don't think it does well in just a normal home setting. Again, somebody can prove me wrong. Put your plant below. I want to know what you do give me tips because I really think that they're beautiful and I would really love to grow them outside of a cabinet or outside of a humidity, you know, fan, whatever. Um, but I just don't see that happening. 
uh, for me at least. So it sits here in water and it sits in my greenhouse cabinet and I just look over it every once in a while to make sure that it doesn't have spider mites. But the one thing I will say is after putting it in my greenhouse cabinet um, with the humidity is the foliage is all popping out correctly. So this is in water again. This was my water culture one. Um, the leaves look great. They're all unfurling properly and not having an issue of getting stuck and doing really well. So I say if you want a melanochrysum, I would make sure that you have somewhere to put it that can get the proper humidity, keep it well watered, check the soil to make sure that there's no spider mites, check the plant to make sure there's no spider mites. Otherwise, I just struggle with it. But this is the Philodendron Splendid, and I got this last year um, at, or no, I got this earlier this year, just a couple months ago, actually, sorry. Um, I think in February, I got this plant at um, Green Acres, Irving, uh, Texas. But this is a hybrid of the Melanochrysum, is it Varicosum? I think, I think it's, it's Varicosum, but I'm not sure. Um, so this, it honestly looks extremely similar to the melanochrysum, like these leaves right here look identical. However, it is again, a hybrid. And so um, they say that this is an easier plant than the melanochrysum. And I've seen people on YouTube here and people that I follow that agree and say that if you want a melanochrysum, just get the splendid because it is an easier grower, doesn't have the same spider mite attacking issue apparently, and it doesn't require the same humidity, humidity level that the melanochrysum does. So I set this, just to test it out, exactly where I set my melanochrysum when I first got it, in a southwest facing window in our bedroom. It does sit like near my humidifier, but I haven't been as great at keeping it filled and I water it once the soil is completely dry. So I have not had a spider mite issue. This is in my good soil. So I immediately repotted it into my good soil. I wasn't messing it around. And I think it's doing okay. Um, it has had two leaves unfurl in my care. So this leaf right, leaf right here, which it looks fine. It looks a little bit like warped at the top. And then this leaf right here, which got a little stuck and it broke itself, but not like a major breaking. It didn't break itself in half to where the leaf was not salvageable, which is what my melanochrysum was doing. Um, Cause it would literally break off the stem and like you can't keep that. So this guy has a new leaf growing out right here already. So I will say that it is a, a fast grower cause I got this in a very small pot, by the way. This was like a very small cutting of it. Um, and so I got that, I think I got it for $15 there, but I purchased it in, again, the small little plug. And so it's pushed out two new leaves and one new leaf on the way. So I will say that in the just normal home setting, it's doing really well. It's doing what I wanted the melanochrysum to do, which is not need any special attention, but it is a easier to care for plant so far. Again, same velvet, really pretty leaves. I do watch it for spider mites just because I know that the mother of it is, you know, the melanochrysum. And so I want to be prepared. Um, this is the only velvet leaf philodendron that I have had, like the melanochrysum that has uh, had a pest. Uh, so I know that there are people who say that I think the velvets are like a more pest, like higher pest rate. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I have, again, not had to deal with any of that, thankfully, but um, only on my melanochrysum. So that's the Splendid. Again, it looks to me identical um, with the melanochrysum. It does have a red tint back. That's why I'm thinking, I think it's the varicosum, but I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the actual um, two mother plants below. But that is my last one, Splendid, Philodendron Splendid. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven velvet philodendron. Watch me go look and see. Well, because that's what I did with the splendid. I didn't think I had any more and then I forgot the splendid. That was it. That was my velvet leaf philodendron collection. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any other velvet philodendron that I did not list here, because I'm sure that there are a lot of them. Make sure to subscribe and we will see you next time.